So, Thank you very much for your <coughs> indulgence. Thank you. I'll ask Senator Neil O'Donnell. Thank you, Minister. Thanks very much. <coughs> I think Minister Cannon is taking your side. Tash, oh, ta Tash Thank you, Minister. Uh, and uh, Senator Neil O'Donnell, you have a four minutes to outline your case. I was right glad. Gramaiga the Carly Ogus Ira Gramaiga as a veil in the Dun Flash on Yogas and Fa Karaman Kesh Dira Na Gowil Rahach Ogus Fak the Siak Dol Wari Golare Major Lesson Kesh Gahariha Ohui. Minister, thank you for taking the time to come in to speak to me in relation to this request and the growing concerted. Uh, call from uh, Irish citizens uh, and those who plan for Irish passports in the north for a dedicated office and facility to meet that uh, growing and increased uh, demand. You'll know, Minister, that last year there was over 82,000 passport applications uh, came from uh, the north itself. There were even more uh, again uh, in Britain. Uh, from the north, the increase was up uh, almost a fifth uh, on 2016. 2016 was up in 2015, 2015 was up in 2014, and that has been uh, the concerted uh, pattern over the last number uh, of years. Uh, First-time applications uh, for passports, Irish passports, made up almost half uh, of the requests last year uh, alone. So, Minister, the call, uh, which comes not just uh, from Sinn Féin, although we are proud to lead uh, here in this institution uh, on this uh, campaign, but it has come from other political uh, parties in the North, the SDLP, uh, agree with us on this. Fianna Fáil uh, have indicated that they would uh, like to see uh, something located uh, in the north as well. The Alliance Party have said that there is merit uh, in looking uh, at this uh, facility and service being open. So it's about improving uh, infrastructure and service delivery across the country. There are two existing passport offices, and I want to take the very quick opportunity to commend the staff in those passport offices who have been working under immense pressure to deliver uh, what is a vital and important service uh, and right for people uh, across uh, the state. But there's the offices currently in Cork uh, in Dublin, and they service those parts uh, of the country very well. What we are saying uh, is that there is an incremental increased uh, growing demand coming uh, from not just the six counties, but indeed the broader uh, northern uh, and uh, northwest uh, regions. And there is merit in the government looking at how they improve the infrastructure uh, across all of our 32 uh, counties. The Irish government and indeed Kiefer Hofstadt, when he uh, visited here to address us a number of months ago, highlighted their commitment to protecting uh, our rights as full Irish and full EU uh, citizens. So what I'm uh, calling on the government to do, Minister, is to show that, is, is to put their money where their mouth is, uh, to make an investment, to make a practical infrastructural service uh, investment uh, in uh, the northern part uh, of our country. Show us uh, when the Taoiseach rightly says that on his watch no longer will Irish citizens in the north feel abandoned. Don't abandon us. Show us that the preparations and the work uh, is underway uh, as, as the unwanted and negative uh, impact uh, of Brexit is rolled out, uh, shows that the Irish government uh, remains steadfast, that they are here to stay in terms of uh, citizens' rights uh, in the North. And one way to do that would be uh, certainly hugely symbolic with the opening of a passport uh, office, um, but it would also be uh, something that would help immensely, as I said, with service delivery uh, and the practicalities of the increasing uh, demand uh, for Irish passports from Irish citizens in the north. Uh, 2017 was a, a record-breaking year for the passport service, with approximately 780,000 uh, passports issued. And this was an increase of over 6% compared to 2016, and an increase of over 15% since 2015. And that strong demand for Irish passports includes an increased demand from Irish citizens in Northern Ireland and Great Britain and overall almost 20% of the total number of applications received by the passport service last year were from Northern Ireland and Great Britain. And as the Senator has already pointed out, a total of 82,274 applications were received from applicants in Northern Ireland, and first-time applicants represented approximately half of all those applications from Northern Ireland. We predict that increasing demand will continue to be a feature of our work in 2018, bearing in mind a range of factors, including a growing population and economy. Between the 1st and the 21st of January this year, the Passport Service has already received 53,554 passport applications. Of this total, and in the same period, we have received 4,446 applications from Irish citizens in Northern Ireland. 4,020 of these have been made via the Northern Ireland Passport Express Service, 
while 425 have been received via the Passport Online Renewal Service. In anticipation of increased demand, my department has commissioned research to try to better understand the potential demand for passports from citizens who have not yet applied for a passport, and that study will assist the department in formulating plans on the resources required into the future. Responding to this significant and growing demand, the Passport Service offers a range of convenient channels for submission of passport applications by Irish citizens at home and abroad, and advice and guidance on these channels and other useful information on passports is available on the Department's website at dfa.ie forward slash passports. The Department has worked exceptionally hard to ensure that we provide a modern, a secure and an efficient passport service. An ambitious reform programme is in place to meet the unprecedented demand for passports from Irish citizens at home and abroad and to continuously strengthen systems guarding against fraud and protecting the integrity of the Irish passport. The award-winning online passport renewal service was launched in March 2017 and offers the convenience of an online application system 24 hours a day, seven days a week for adult Irish citizens anywhere in the world without the need for application forms, printed photos or witnesses. The introduction of that online service not only offers improved customer experience but is also resulting in efficiency gains which are assisting my department to manage the large volume increases in applications. Citizens who cannot or do not wish to apply online have the option of applying through their local post office and in 2017 over 400 400,000 citizens availed of this option and submitted their passport application through the network of more than 1,000 post offices across the state. The Northern Ireland Passport Express Service offers an equivalent service to those living in Northern Ireland from more than 70 of its post offices. We are keenly aware of the importance of our post office network on this island and I want to acknowledge the valuable role that it plays in administering the Passport Express Service, offering a convenient and a cost-effective option for citizens across the island of Ireland. Bearing in mind the av availability of both the online and the postal application channels, very few citizens living on the island of Ireland are required to travel a significant distance in order to apply for their passport. In the relatively small number of cases where citizens need to travel very, very urgently and do not have a valid passport, the passport offices in Dublin and Cork offer an appointment service, including, where necessary, a rapid renewal one-day service. The passport office keeps passport demand under review on an ongoing basis, to address the increased demand for passports during peak season, the passport service is this year employing over 210 temporary clerical officers to assist in processing, and these staff have been hired and the roles are currently being filled. My department has also been working closely with uh, Deeper to fill permanent positions across all passport offices, and I'm very pleased to say that over 20 permanent staff have joined the passport service in the past month. Furthermore, it's already planned to further extend the online application facility to all citizens including first-time applicants and children by 2019, and this will be a very significant step indeed in terms of enhancing the service for all of our citizens. This will allow additional efficiency gains and improvements in customer service. People who cannot or do not wish to apply online will still be able to submit their applications through a service provider with an extensive network of contact points throughout the country. In all of the circumstances, I am satisfied that the range of service options available meets the current needs of passport applicants and projected demand, and I do not see a compelling rationale to open an additional passport office in Northern Ireland at this time. I should clarify that any new office would need to have the capacity to provide that rapid renewal service to applicants with urgent travel needs, such as that available through the passport office in Dublin. This would require an on-site passport production machine in a specially controlled and secure environment, the purchase cost of the new passport printing machine alone would approximately be 1.7 million euro, uh, and that's without the security, the technical, the fit-out, staffing and rental costs associated with that. An outreach office without those production facilities couldn't offer a significantly faster service than the online option, and it would do no more than duplicate the Passport Express service already offered to those 70 local post offices. In all the circumstances, I'm convinced that with the existing and future range of services, including Passport Express, Rapid Renewal and online services, my department will continue to more than adequately meet the needs of all passport applicants wherever in the island of Ireland they are living. My department is also working on an outreach public awareness programme to inform the general public of all the services that are, are available now in terms of applying for a passport. Uh, in depth response, it might not be yeah. entirely to your liking, but I'll allow you a brief supplementary. Minister, I don't 
disagree with uh, almost everything <laughs> that you said. I do think the passport service uh, are first class. Uh, I do believe that the staff in the post office network and indeed in the passport office do an immensely uh, worthwhile uh, service uh, to citizens uh, right across the state. I'm disappointed that uh, cost uh, and any cost associated has been seen uh, as a, a rationale for not locating this service uh, in the north. Um, you cite 1.7 million uh, as a, a euro was the, the cost for the print facility, um, but I'm sure all 82,274 people who applied for new and renewal passports paid uh, for that service. Um, so I don't know that, that, that cost is necessary. Is necessary the best case. This is about investing. This is about future planning. This is about meeting a clearly identifiable need. This is about, within the broader political context, which, which, which we can't ignore, uh, Cahirlach, about saying to Irish citizens north of the border that we are investing in you. Uh, we see you uh, as part uh, of the life uh, of this state and this country uh, overall, uh, and we will meet uh, that need with the service delivery uh, that you are entitled to. So, while I appreciate that the service at this stage, Minister, you rightly, and I agree with, uh, is first class uh, and, and is at this point, there is a growing demand. That demand will, in my opinion, continue to grow, um, and I think the political call uh, and the very broad political call uh, for this service will not be going away. If, if you want to, to yeah, just we're, quickly, we're yeah. over time, but we'll. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, it is critical to point out that the uh, rights of our citizens uh, on all of the island of Ireland to apply for and to retain an Irish passport uh, is a right that is at the very core of the work that we do. Um, and again, I agree fully that the, um, there are significant challenges that will arise in terms of what Brexit is going to bring. Uh, but we are, you know, the service that is available to the, the network of 70 post offices and increasingly online. We are now moving from a point where last year, if you were to avail of the online service, you had to be over 18 and being, uh, and being in renewal of your passport. We will be shortly moving that, allowing that service to be accessed by everybody who is applying for a passport for the first time. That's a significant development. And also, just to point out again, the purchase cost of that machine would be 1.7 million euro. And the number of applicants submitting their applications to any additional or new office would not be sufficient to keep the machine running for more than half an hour a day, uh, as it can print approximately 500 passports per hour. So I think if we channel our resources uh, to enhancing all of the services that are already existing with, um, within the island and available to all citizens of the island, that would be a far more appropriate sure. use of those resources. Thank, Thank you, Minister. Thank you, Senator. Next, we have uh, Senator Gabriel McFadden and uh, Minister.